Hi everyone, welcome to the channel. Welcome if you're new. I'm Stacy, and we are going to be painting a chickadee. A little snowy scene with some branches and berries um, and a muted, like, washed out background. I am using my Aqu Aqua Mini, Aqua Mini, yeah, Sennelier set of paints that I got in my Palletful Packs box. Um, these are all the colors that, that come in the set. There you go. Um, and it's a perfect selection for this painting. I have out my water, my three water glasses. I have my large one back here for clean water. And then I have out my two small ones for um, uh, dirty and less dirty, basically is how we work this. Dirty, less dirty, clean is the thought pattern when I start. <laughs> All right, so diving right in. I have my Princeton Neptune round number 18 and we are going to go ahead and working around the berries and the, sorry about the shadow of my arm right there, and the bird and all the things. Just going to dampen the background out to about there. And I'm going to go ahead and use blue. Now this this set doesn't come with a um, a palette for mixing. And I want to use the French Ultramarine and the Cerulean. Is it Cerulean? I can't say that word. The other blue. And kind of make a muted kind of um, blue and white background back here. Kind of to the edge of the page, but not worrying about filling it all in completely. More water. Come down here. Get in a little, little wash down here as well. Now this brush um, lends quite a bit of control on the tip. Princeton Neptune brushes are pretty nice. And this is going to dry a lot lighter. But, there we go. I do want it to be a soft background. I do like it when the color moves around. And I'm purposefully dropped in water at the top to make blooms, which you can see are these spots where the the water is pushing the paint away and it's going to make a definite pattern which I enjoy and am looking for. A little too much water. If you get too much water on your brush and you don't really, or your paper, just blot your brush and pick it up. Just pick it up like that. Let's go around the berries. I'm not going for perfection here, um, but I would like the snow to be pretty white on these branches. Maybe a little bit there, and then down here, like that, over here. Let it fade down to nothing down here because not really an important attention grabbing area, right? Do that up here, and there's our background. Ta da! <laughs> Super simple. And we don't need the big brush anymore, so we can clean that off. I like to wring him out. He, he stays wet for a long time and just set him there. And then I'm going to go in around this chickadee 
where it's super white because I don't want it to be super white around him. That. And then in between, in the tight spots here where the berries and the bird, you can see the blue through. I think that might be good. Maybe here. There. Okay. Now, I did use reference photos to draw this out, but um, I kind of hodgepodge several different reference photos together. So there's not any one reference photo for this um, composition. And that'll give it kind of a bokeh-ish kind of background back there, which is fun. Fun, fun. Just a little, little drops of water here and there. It doesn't have to be everywhere. And then, heat tool maybe? Yeah, let's do the heat tool. And I'll edit this part out so you, you don't have to worry about headphones or anything. Okay, done with that. I think I'm going to use my Princeton Heritage brush. Uh, this is the Heritage Series round number six. I have the Neptune round number eight, which, as you can see, is a softer, more watercolor brush. This is synthetic um, that has more snap and isn't quite as absorbent with the water. Um, I think I'm going to start with the and this little chickadee is mostly blacks and grays and whites. So we're just going to get in some, what's that cap? And then here is a little bit dark. I'm going to use my Payne's Gray and a little blue, because I don't want it to be black, just because I don't find that to be interesting. You can, if you want, paint it black, it's, it's totally up to you. And as you can see, wherever you drop the water in is where the paint's going to move to. And if you want it to move more, you can push it around or whatever, but his little, his little cap is just dark back there. And I like that blue-black look really pretty for me. And then let's put some water here and move his little chest feathers into that white chest area. This cute little neck feathers and then his Beak is right here. I don't want it to be too dark, so I'm going to leave that that alone, and we'll come back to it. Um, if you if you do the beak right now and try to make it a soft gray, which is what I want, with this dark and this dark here and there. It's going to just bleed down into the beak, and I don't want that right now. So let's just put in a little bit of um, wet on dry technique right here for these feathers. And then this, this little tail feather is pretty dark on that outside edge right there. Get in some different values for you don't need to do a lot for these little birds to make them read as a bird and be super cute um, I want a little just a little shadowing on that white tummy right here so we'll do that and then just kind of I don't want the bird the tummy to be white white down here, but he is sitting in snow, so 
So I do want the snow to read as pretty bright white. Yep. And then a little soft graying right there. And kind of push it up into there. Nice. I'd like that to be a little darker right here. Maybe grab a little more paint. A little bit of straight panes in that blue. That's pretty, right? And I like a bird's head feathers to be a little ruffled. I think it's cute. I want to circle that eye area. Leaving a little bit of white, see? So that it reads as an eye. It doesn't have to be completely filled in. And it looks cute. I'm digging it. Okay. Is this dry enough right here? Yeah. We can go in with a little bit of a damp brush and put in our little beak, the rest of it. Grab some dark from there. Like so, and this is part of his little body back here. Alright, we're going to leave him alone, let him dry completely before we mess with him at all. Um, I think I might want to... Yeah, just a little variation for the wing back there. He might be done. Alright, I dig it. Alright, moving on. I'm going to... Wet the berry part right here. Some of these are stacked. Some of them have snow on them. So we don't want to wet the whole area. And this is French Vermilion. Now it's a little orange for me. Oh. What can we do to fix that? Maybe a touch, just a, a touch of blue. Oh, that darkened it a bit too much. There we go, that's better. It still reads as pretty orange to me. I'm not digging. The blue kind of just grayed it out. Not what I wanted. We'll go with straight. Ooh. Ooh, I do love how this paint just spreads out on a, on a wet spot. That's awesome. Take it. That that's really pretty. I like that. Now berries don't all have to be perfectly shaped. They can be um because of the shadows and the snow and the um, ice crystals and crispities that are going to be on them. Clean my brush a little more, get some clean water to get these berries, get just the wet part in right here and right here. And take our red and just plop it in a little bit. Let it do its thing. Take it. I love that. How it just moves around. 
bleeds out. Remember some of these berries are, um, well all of these berries are, are snowy and crispity, right? So you don't need to be perfect. Go ahead and wet this section. And these berries over here. Kind of tucked into that snow pile right there. Just drop in some color. Oh, it's so pretty. Let it bleed around a little bit. I'm digging it. All right. Now, I'm going to take this green, which is sap green, which is one of my favorite, favorite greens. I'm going to put it, I'm going to put it in this blue one right here. Water. Sap. Okay, we got enough? I think so. I'm going to start just painting in our greenery gently, gently, gently. That. I don't mind that bleeding in at all. I, I kind of like it, actually. Pull this green color in right there. It's a bit tucked into the snow. Twig that has berries on it. Right there. Drop in some color for variation. Like that. It's pretty, right? I dig it. green right there. You can see it go disappear like into the snow. And then there are the little needles that are coming down like that. Which we can also drop your color here and there. Give it some variation. Like that. I think I might go ahead and dampen that. A little bit right there. Pick up some of that one. It's got a little too wet as I usually do. Just blot. And then I like it. Okay. Let's do underneath this bit of snow right here. That. 
I got really quiet because I'm contemplating. Is this a good idea? Is it not? It is. It's fine. Roll with it. I'm getting too caught up in all the chaos. Alright, I'm going to take a little bit of this burnt umber. Put it over here with this gray. Make it kind of a gray brown color. Put in our twigs for the berries. Like that. Couple of squiggly twig shapes like that. Yeah, I like it. Okay, and then these guys over here need their twig painted in as well. Like so. Then on the bottom of the berries is this like little dark diamond shape on some of them. Well, it's kind of like a star, actually. You're not going to see it on all of them, but on a couple. Little dark bottoms here and there. Like so. Okay. And some of these you're not going to see the twigs, the little stems and squiggles. And some of them you are. Okay, and then we have an actual branch coming in right here. A little bit of paint's gray on the bottom edge. Like so. Right there. Right here. Like that. Okay. What else do we want to do? Oh yeah, another another twig coming in right here. Some of that sienna right on top. Or umber. That's a burnt umber, sorry. Right on top. Like that. Because I dig it. You don't have to do this if you don't want to on yours. But I enjoy it. That. Are we liking it? I'm kind of liking it. I think he's cute. Alright, so now for where the snow is, I don't want it to be like super crisp white, but I don't want gray in it. So I think I'm going to take some of this blue, these two blues that I like really really watered down super watered down um first I'm gonna take my eraser she says what's and gently get rid of what lines I can from my pencil marks, which I probably should have lightened before I started. It's a good rule of thumb if you do a uh, pencil sketch um, for your painting and you don't want all the lines to show up. 
I mean, generally speaking, I don't mind lines, but some people do. Wherever there's a line, you can just put a shadow. A snow shadow, so that the snow doesn't look crisp white. See? You can have some shadow in it. Especially where it meets the greenery. A little dry brushing for that snow texture. See how it creates that little bit of texture on the page. I dig it. Like that. Red on my brush. A little more of that blue. Really thin, thinned out. Super thin though. And just drag it across like that. simple painting. Um, if you want, you can get in here and really um, pick and pick. Make a green and gray for darker needles like this. Oops. Um, drop them in. Let that light read through. Don't cover all of them, mind. Just a few. Like that. Gives it a little visual interest, right? Like that. And yes, I do see where this snow right here should be heavier. Some of that blue out of there right there in just a second. I'm not sure if it will. I don't remember how staining the Sennelier paint is. Alright, so clean, clean water. And drop it on where I want it to be a little lighter. Give it a little scrubby scrub. I'm going to take my tissue and find a clean spot and try to blot. Did that work? Not really. Not really. Now you can go in with some blue bleed proof white if you want to or colored pencil. Um, I am partial to the bleed proof white, which I actually don't know where it is. There it is. I have two of them and I keep moving them around. This is the one I'm currently using. I'm just dip in here. You don't have to. You can pull some out and put it in the cap if you want to. Thin it out. Like so. And it is water soluble so it will re-wet. So I would use it as like finishing touches on your piece. And not strictly as um Maybe not in the middle, because it is, I mean, it is white, right? You can use it for highlights, and I mean, you can do whatever you want, but for me, I tend to use it at the end of a painting to fix mistakes, or I've discovered over the course of the wintertime paintings that I've done that I tend to use it in this fashion with, um... abandoned and quite heavily as snow, which I enjoy. Uh, you can use gouache, you can use ink, 
You can use um, colored pencil if you have a particular area where you would rather your piece was more crispity, but I find this works quite nicely. Especially on this, uh, this tip right here where the snow should be heavy right there. Yeah, I dig it. Alright. This is our last little bit that we're going to do. And then we're going to be done with our painting. A little bit of snow on that twig. Um, anywhere on the berries where you think it might accentuate these. Right? Like that. And are we done? I think we might be. Maybe a little Christmas on these berries. Like that. Ta da! And like I said, you can make this as elaborate as you want it to be. I just wanted to do a quick, loose, kind of um, little watercolor piece for Watercolor Wednesday. I haven't done a piece of art in uh, several days. So, ooh, I bleed proof way all over the place. <laughs> uh, so this is to help me loosen up and get back in the flow for the new year. I have a few videos coming up for telling you guys what I'm planning, what's going on, what the, the scheme is for the year. But for right now, this is it. I will um, see you guys in the next video. Don't forget to thumbs up and like and subscribe and all that jazz. There's a little close-up bills in there. See how that background looks kind of bokeh-y? Yeah. I, I think this is cute and might make a really cute Christmas card for next year's um, Christmas card uh, extravaganza that's going to happen. <laughs> Alright, I'm going to shut up now and probably go to bed. I will see you guys in the next video. Thank you so much for being here. Bye!